organization on this first webinar. It's really important that we're looking at this as this was what we would have been learning in school if there hadn't been a school closure. So today we're going to think about what is urbanization, what are the causes of urbanization, what are the effects of urbanization, both positive and negative, and the future for the cities. So what is an urban area? An urban area is somewhere that you live, you all live in Oxford, so it's an urban area is a built up area such as a town or a city. So we're going to be thinking a little bit more about urban areas today. Over half the world's population now lives in cities and by 2030 is expected that 60% of the world's population will live in urban areas. This increase is urbanisation. So what is urbanisation? Urbanisation is different from just urban. Urbanisation is a process where an increasing proportion of the population lives in towns and cities and there is a reduction living in rural areas. So what's that saying is that there are more people living in urban areas in a population than they do in the countryside, in the rural areas. And we're going to think about today, where is that happening? Why is it happening? And what are the impacts of that in those different countries? So let's recap. What is a megacity? So if I tell you that London's a megacity, Tokyo, New York, what? What kind of number of people do you think live in these cities? The answer is over 10 million. So a megacity is a city that contains over 10 million. Now, some books you'll see that London is a megacity and in some books you'll see that it's not a megacity. But if we look at the greater London area, then it is over 10 million people. They make some of the largest and most important settlements on Earth. This is where trade happens, finances, a lot of rules, laws, policies are passed here. There's a huge hub of migration and cultural impact. So these cities not only impact on themselves, on the countries around them, but also on the world. Now, there are 24 cities with megacity status. Now, that has increased now to 28. So let's have a look at some maps. Mega cities in 1950, we've got New York and we've got Tokyo. Just two. Now we look at mega cities in 2015, there are 28. There's a huge increase. And if we look at the bottom map, we can see how some of these mega cities are growing. Let's take New York, one of those mega cities that was in the original. 20 million, and by 2025, it will grow to 24 million, which is only an increase of 20%. Let's look at Dhaka in Bangladesh, 15 million, and then it will grow to 23 million. That's an increase of 53%. So those are changing all the time. And they're happening more in those LIC countries, those low income countries, rather than the HICs, which are your high income countries. So the trend is that it's all increasing. And there are two main reasons for this. The first one is rural to urban migration. And it's really important to think of this. Rural push factors, are the two, we've got two factors that cause it. Rural push factors, those negative things. So if you think of pushing as a negative thing, it's those negative things that are pushing people away from the countryside. And then you've got the city pull factors, the positive things that are pulling people towards the city. So we've got two main factors of urbanisation, rural to urban migration and natural increase. We've just talked a bit about rural to urban migration, moving from those countrysides to the towns and cities. Now, these are the push factors, those negative things that are happening in the countryside that are making people want to leave. Lack of jobs, famine or lack of food, natural disasters, lack of healthcare and poor education. And all of those things are driving people away from the city, away from the countryside and into the cities, into those urban areas. Pull. These are the things that are pulling them towards the cities and those urban areas. More employment opportunities, better schools, better healthcare, and better quality of life. Now, with better quality of life, it's really important that we make sure that we understand that that is relative to the people that move there. 
We might look at pictures of where they live in the cities and urban areas and think that that can't be a better quality of life. But actually, from where they have come, where there's no employment, there's no food, there's no jobs, actually, it is a better quality of life and there's a better future for them. The next cause of urbanisation is natural increase. A lot of those people moving from those rural to urban areas are of working age. And those are the people that are more likely to have families, have young children. So births outweigh the deaths. And that is natural increase. People coming from those countryside, those rural areas have traditions of large families. Because maybe in the countryside, they need people to work on the farms. And also there's a higher risk of their children dying. This looks at the deaths then in cities and the healthcare is getting better. So the deaths are decreasing. So you get this increased natural increase and it's quite rapid in LICs where births are much higher than deaths. And so we get a population increase. So now we're gonna look at the negative effects of urbanization. We're going to think about a place called Dharavi, which is in Mumbai in India. And this is one of the world's largest slums. Every day, a population the same size as Liverpool turn up to Dharavi and they've moved from the countryside into the city. So if we look at that top picture, you can see there's a huge amount of overcrowding. One million people per square mile live in Dharavi. So then that has impacts on other parts of urbanisation, pollution, disease, poor sanitation. In Dharavi, there is only one loo per 500 people. So a lot of people would go in the streets. The waste pipes and the water pipes are broken and they go, they mix together. So there's very poor sanitation, which impacts on people's health. There's poor pollution. A lot of waste. However, there are positive effects of urbanisation as well and it's really important that we can see both sides of this. There's a huge community within Dharavi, so people live very close by, they're, they're like a giant family. There's less crime in places like Dharavi. Job opportunities, Job opportunities are so high that actually 85% of the population in Dharavi is employed. So unemployment rates are really low. One problem I would say though with job opportunities is a lot are informal, which means you don't pay tax. And the less tax the government get, the less they are then able to spend it on education, sanitation, jobs and things like that. However, education is there and there are opportunities for young people to go and have an education. And recycling. Although we talked about waste as one of the negative effects of urbanisation, in Dharavi, because you can sell a lot of the parts on, 80% of the waste is recycled. So that's a really positive part of it. So let's look to the future. In 2030, 60% of people are going to live in urban areas. So we need to change the way we live within our urban areas. And we're going to think about the word sustainability. Sustainability is used in geography all the time and for lots of different ways and different topics. So you will have come across it before. But let's recap on what it means. To be sustainable means that you are using resources now without impacting future generation to use the same resources. So if we were going to be sustainable in a city, we would use the city and the resources that we needed, but future generations could come to that city and it be the same. So sustainability means an action that can be kept going forever, something that can continue to be done without it having damaging consequences that might limit the activity in the future. So let's have a look at some examples. Bus routes, removing the amount of cars in a city. The more cars you get in a city, the more congestion, traffic and pollution. So let's have a look at pedestrian areas, another way of removing cars from the city and making it much cleaner. Green spaces and urban farming is something that's happening a lot in cities at the moment. By bringing in those green spaces, you're taking out some of the carbon dioxide and you're replacing it with oxygen. 
So people will put gardens on their roofs. A lot of people have got allotments and they're growing fruit and veg within the city. So the cities are becoming much greener. Reduce, reuse, recycle is all about removing the amount of waste that cities produce. A lot of companies within cities will have initiatives where they get paid to reduce the amount of waste they have. And then finally, congestion zones. And this is happening in London, where if you go into that central part of London, then you have to pay. So it's putting people off using the city in their cars and going and visiting it. Because the more congestion, like we said, the more pollution that there is. So this webinar, we've looked at a changing world. We've thought about this urban pattern urbanization and how it's happening more in LICs, low income countries than HICs. We've thought about why is it happening? Rural to urban migration, those pushes and pull factors for people moving into cities. We've thought about natural increase and population growth within cities. We've also thought about the impacts of people moving to the cities, positive impacts, but also those negative impacts that are happening. And now we're thinking about the future of cities and how cities are changing. So the next time you see urbanisation will be year 11, paper two in human geography. If you can remember everything from this webinar, it will really support your learning as you go through GCSE and think about the human geography and urbanisation. Thank you so much for listening and hopefully that has been helpful.